It was a race of attrition at Silverstone, which culminated in a 10-lap showdown with five cars from five teams racing for second position at the end. It was a brilliant race to watch, which will also be remembered as a day in which Formula 1 safety was proven to be so valuable once again. There's a lot to talk about, so here's my five things we learned from the British Grand Prix. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. Carlos Sainz is a Grand Prix winner. It was a brilliant weekend for Carlos Sainz as the Spaniard scored his first pole position and first race victory at Silverstone in a race performance that was a long time coming for the driver this year. Since moving to Ferrari, there was always a risk that Sainz would be playing second fiddle to Charles Leclerc, and last year he proved that he could beat the Monegas driver over the course of a season, which is why this year looked like such an exciting prospect, with the Ferrari car looking strong and both drivers looking like they could achieve strong results. And Sainz did it the hard way. He took pole position in the wet weather conditions as he was the driver that was able to hook the lap up when the track was in its best possible condition through Q3. Sure, he benefited from Verstappen being forced to lift as a result of Leclerc's spin, but he was still able to make it count when he needed to. In the race itself, it was not all plain sailing either for Sainz as he found it difficult to defend from Verstappen early on and was then vulnerable to his teammate. And then, once again, he was defending from his teammate later in the Grand Prix at the next stint. It was a late safety car that won it for Sainz as he got fresh soft tyres on in time to allow him to be the lead car on fresh rubber and then managed to build a dominant lead as the others competed behind him. I think it was quite telling that Sainz was so defiant on his radio message to try and keep right on the back of Leclerc at the end of the safety car period. It showed just how experience helped Sainz get the win in the end and now he's just 11 points behind his teammate despite that poor performance so far this year. So for me, yes, it wasn't perfect, but I can't not give him a green box for this first Grand Prix victory. Ferrari strategy calls are poor again. It was a brilliant opportunity for Ferrari at this Grand Prix. After a series of dominant races from Red Bull and Max Verstappen, both of the Red Bull drivers suffered damage, which slowed them down significantly and seemed to take them out of contention. But it wasn't just a Ferrari show, as the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton looked so strong behind them. What this meant was that there was a strong strategy decision that would be needed to ensure the team took home maximum points and could inflict as much damage as possible to Verstappen and Red Bull's championship leads. But, as we've seen on so many occasions in 2022 and previously, the Ferrari team were almost apathetic in their decision making as they didn't consider the car swap after Verstappen got by Sainz in the beginning of the race, and instead opted to pit Sainz so they didn't have to make a decision right at the end of the first stint. On this occasion, the team got lucky given Verstappen's damaged floor meant he was uncompetitive after that point anyway. But this situation came up again after Leclerc stopped for hard tyres about 6 or 7 laps later. The two drivers were almost on top of each other on track once again, and even with Leclerc's damaged front wing end plate, he looked to be faster than his teammate. And it took a while for the team to eventually make the call to swap the cars, as they'd both been losing time and were looking vulnerable to Lewis Hamilton's overcut. Once again, the Ferrari team got lucky, with a slow stop for Hamilton meaning he came out behind them, albeit with a significant tyre advantage. But there was even one more instance of disappointing Ferrari strategy, the late safety car. The team were able to stop Sainz but did not stop Leclerc, meaning there was a huge tyre differential between the two cars after the safety car restart, with Sainz clearly communicating on the radio that he knew he would be the fastest car, which was obvious to all. And yet, the Ferrari team were on the radio asking the Spaniard to create a 10 car length gap between him and the race leader. A quite frankly, ridiculous request from the team. It shows that Ferrari clearly have a preferred driver and want to protect Leclerc, which is fair enough when you consider the championship positions, but as Sainz rightly argued, it made no sense. Leclerc on the hard compound tyres was always going to be a sitting duck as he tried to warm those tyres back up again. Meanwhile, Sainz on the soft was going to be rapid. You could argue that the mistake from the team was asking Sainz to hold everyone else up, or it could have been the fact that Leclerc didn't get the opportunity to change tyres himself when he definitely had the opportunity. But in the end, it was Sainz who proved himself right, getting the move done early and then building a huge lead while the other cars tried to compete with Leclerc. But it was another disappointing day for Ferrari strategy calls, despite the fact that Sainz managed to get himself his first race win. So for me, the team's strategy deserves an amber box. It was just clumsy, although they did take that top step of the podium and scored a much-needed haul of 37 points to Red Bull's 24. 
Before we take a look at the huge Turn 1 incident, showing just how far F1 safety has come, I want to take a moment to ask you to consider subscribing to Behind the Drive. I'm aiming for 50,000 subscribers by the end of this month, and we're almost there. So if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thanks. Formula One safety proves its worth again. The British Grand Prix is clearly going to be remembered by the terrifying first corner incident involving multiple cars and taking three drivers out of the race. Russell's poor start on the hard compound tyres saw Latifi dart through on the softs and as Russell moved across on Pierre Gasly behind, he triggered a series of events which saw Joe upside down heading into the safety fence. I think first of all, it's incredible to see that Joe is okay after that scary trip through the barriers. There were numerous safety features that did their job during the accident, including the safety fence, the survival cell, and importantly, the halo ensured the driver's head was protected. But it was also the driver extraction teams and the medical team that were able to swiftly respond to the accident into turn one. Meanwhile, as a result of the drivers reacting to the crash ahead, as it happened on the left-hand side of the circuit, Albon lifted in response to Bottas and then Vettel tagged the back of the Williams driver. This spun the Williams car into the pit wall and then back across into the rest of the runners, coming through turn one, in what was another pretty big shunt resulting in the Williams driver taken to hospital for precautionary checks. It was impressive to see the Alpine and AlphaTauri mechanics repair their cars so quickly to ensure the drivers could rejoin the race after the subsequent red flag period, although there was confusion as to how the race would restart, with the order taken from the starting grid as opposed to the running order after the red flag. There all was something to do with the second safety car line and the fact that the cars hadn't all passed that point at the time of the red flag. It's a strange regulation given it penalised the drivers like Hamilton and Verstappen that had delivered some excellent performances off the line to get themselves up the order, and they ended up losing out on those positions gained. It feels like a bit of a messy rule considering in a red flag incident there would almost certainly be some drivers involved that might not make it around before the race is stopped. It's another one of those weird rules in the F1 rulebook that's a bit confusing, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. But the important thing for me regarding this incident is that Zhou Guan Yu, the driver that's been performing so well over the last three races, was okay after that terrifying incident. And it's another day that shows F1 safety truly is excellent. So for me, it's massively deserving of a green box today. Mercedes are back. It feels like it's been suggested on a few occasions this year, but with Formula 1's return to a smooth track surface, Mercedes looked to be confident once again, just as they displayed in Barcelona. Their narrative was promising going into the weekend, as the team were seemingly quietly confident even before a lap had been turned. The performance from Barcelona was a sign of what could be to come for the team whenever they could handle the porpoising that had plagued them throughout the season so far. On this occasion, Lewis Hamilton looked so fast in the race. He ate into the Ferrari lead throughout the first and second stints, and it looked like he was in a position where he could have won the race if it wasn't for the late safety car. He had a 14-lap advantage on Sainz and an 8-lap advantage over Leclerc with his hard compound tyres. It was going to be an awesome end to this race, but it was taken away by the safety car and replaced by another pretty impressive finish. Hamilton took the opportunity to pit for Soft's tyres, along with Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez, as well as a few more cars behind like Fernando Alonso and Lando Norris. And it was a day where Hamilton was in awesome form, and it looked like another day where Hamilton showed his class and incredible talent. As for the team, well, it looks like Mercedes may well be in for a strong second half of the season. The team lost out with George Russell today, and as Perez proved, even being last, there was an opportunity for a strong finish. But going forwards, there are more smooth circuits, and they have a car that's edging closer to the front two teams. The upgrades seem to be working, and as a result, I think Mercedes are deserving of a green box for their performance this weekend. Haas finally take advantage of chaos. We have finally seen Mick Schumacher score his first points of his Formula 1 career, and it was all done by keeping himself out of trouble and benefiting from a race of attrition from so many cars ahead of him. His 8th place finish was almost 7th in the end as he was right behind Max Verstappen in the final corners as they fought to the end of the race in a battle that was reminiscent of Hungary last year. Alongside Schumacher's first 4 F1 points, Kevin Magnussen added another to his tally in the Haas team's first double points finish since 2019. It was a great race for the team that have brought limited upgrades to their car so far in 2022. Their upgrade package has still not arrived, and so they're racing with a car that's arguably becoming more and more out of date relative to their rivals. 
On this occasion, the retirements around them were what enabled the American F1 team to get those points today, and it could well be enough to protect themselves from Williams behind, whose new upgrades may have added difficulty with Albon's retirement this afternoon. So of course, for me, it's got to be a green box for Haas for their double points. Honourable mentions. A few honourable mentions today. I think Sergio Perez was fortunate with a late safety car, but it was still an awesome drive after he dropped right to the back of the pack after being forced to change his front wing because of early damage. His second place finish is crucial for Red Bull to ensure that they still maximise their results on a weekend that certainly didn't go to plan. I also want to recognise Fernando Alonso for a brilliant performance in the Alpine to take 5th position. He, alongside Norris, was right in the race at the end, along with Perez, Hamilton and Leclerc, and it was awesome to watch them compete at the front. And finally, Sebastian Vettel, along with the Haas cars, kept his car out of trouble after a first lap incident and managed to bring home 2 points for ninth position, a great result from a chaotic race. It was a brilliant Grand Prix once again, and Ferrari and Mercedes might be able to challenge the Red Bull in more upcoming races. Let me know what I missed in the comments.